and welcome to Let's Talk HR with Dr. Deneen, the talk show that spotlights HR professionals and talks about all things HR. What do you think about this concept? Develop your employees to leave and watch them stay. <laughs> In the often murky waters of employee retention, this concept might be the secret sauce to success. My guest today certainly thinks so. He is none other than Michael Bruno, strategy and growth leader with Performance Point LLC and co-founder and COO of Aspire Talent Advisory. He will let us know how providing valuable career development in a learning culture is a key element to retaining top performers. Get ready for some insightful discussions. Welcome to the show, Michael. Deneen, it is an absolute pleasure to be here. Always <laughs> great being with you and your energy. Oh, I would thank you so much. Thank you so much. So you coined this phrase, develop your employees to leave and watch them stay. And we're gonna talk all about that. Before we get to that, I wanna learn a little bit about you. Okay. So you're the strategy and growth leader for Performance mm -hmm. Point. LLC, and the co-founder and COO of Aspire Talent Advisory. Right. So tell me, why did you choose this path? And tell us about your professional journey. All of those titles mean I do a lot of different things here. <laughs> uh, and it's been really fun. Uh, looking back, back to our days on the Sherm board, kind of way back when, I won't give the exact dates on it's that. It's been a long time. So it is. So don't want to age either one of us. <laughs> Uh, but I've been working with 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 HR teams and senior HR leaders in 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 providing solutions and and support for HR leaders and teams. So mm -hmm. whether it's recruiting, human capital management, uh, synced up with Brad Fetterman here, um, and like I said, I, I do several roles for the firm. Uh, but uh, but yeah, Aspire Talent Advisory. Mm -hmm. uh, we started that last year. Uh, when I joined the firm, uh, I saw how uh, extensive our consulting was around strategic selection and behavioral yeah. interviewing. Yeah. And I, I had a recruiting background, so I thought, hey, what if we, what if we formed a recruiting offering that used some of those tools and kind of to kind of be different? So that's that's kind of how I got to this point. That's how you got to this point. You found the solution. You found the gap. Mm -hmm. and then you filled it with a solution. I think that is awesome. I think that it's awesome. So this develop employees mm -hmm. to leave and watch them stay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, you did that. And that focuses around employee retention. Right. And you believe that one way that you can do that is through career development. Now Absolutely. we hear all, you know, all the terms about mm -hmm. career development. Mm -hmm. Some call it career development. Some call it professional development. Mm -hmm. Are they different? Tell us. Well, I don't think they're all that different uh, for the purposes of, of kind of my um, kind of thinking around this subject. I think you could use the term professional development. I think you could use the term career development. Uh, legacy HR folks may uh, use terms like training and development, learning and development, <laughs> uh, yeah. you know, training. I think at the end of the day, it doesn't matter as much what you call it as kind of a, uh, an approach an organization has to keep their people. People are hungry. They want to be leveled up. They want to grow. They want to develop. And companies that kind of lean into that are the ones that are going to kind of win recruiting and retention battles. It's interesting that you say people are hungry and people want to be developed develop. They aspire for that. Absolutely. They want that. They want that growth. So let's break it down a little bit mm -hmm. and, and, and tell us what it looks like. So what does career development look like in an organization? So that can vary. It can vary on a lot of different factors. It can vary on, um, uh, you know, large organizations mm -hmm. are going to have more um, uh, employees at large organizations are going to have more access mm -hmm. to you know, more uh, development programs. Uh -huh. That can look like anything from classroom training. It can look like um, uh, there are a lot of online educational mm -hmm. platforms like mm -hmm. Section, uh, Coursera. Uh, there can be uh, professional development can be as inexpensive as a subscription to an industry publication or a, a trade show or okay. a, a conference or All something right. like that. Uh, it can be 
Uh, on the other end of the spectrum, it can be a credentialed piece of education. It can be a degree. Okay. It can be yeah. uh, a bachelor's degree, going back and get a master's degree. Some organizations are basically paying for tuition. They're paying for degrees. Yes. Now. To, yes, to kind of help their employees. So it can vary. Okay, so it, it's it's multiple, mm -hmm. and it's really a, up to you as to how large you want it to be, or how comprehensive you budget, want it to be. What your budget is. What's your budget? Yeah, absolutely. What's your, what's your budget? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So you know the traditional classroom training. That's good. That's one way. Mm -hmm. But then you have these learning platforms, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. Um, that. Um, a thousand employees can go through on one course or sure, sure. Uh, if you want to just segment out your managers or supervisors, you can do that as well, right? Absolutely. So Absolutely. it can be a multiple pronged strategy around what is going to be best for your employees and what they need. Is that correct? Absolutely. I think, I think forward uh, looking organizations are trying to meet their employees kind of where they are mm -hmm. uh, and especially um, you know in the in this age of technology we're in mm -hmm. it's a lot easier to uh, deliver a basically a micro learning session for an hour or two based mm -hmm. on a very you know focused subject than to take somebody mm -hmm. and put them in a classroom all day mm -hmm. so I think it you know again it, it varies by organization and size of the organization and budget uh, but it's an opportunity for organizations to, to, to kind of get creative and, and try to meet their employees where they are. Okay, I'm going to ask you what you've seen. So you talked about the micro, mm -hmm. you know, the micro sessions, mm -hmm. uh, maybe being an hour mm -hmm. or so. You, you talk about that and then you talk about the long sessions. Have you seen a trend where maybe for millennials it's more um, it's better suited to do the micro for attention span or for maybe traditionalist <laughs> or Gen Xers, you can expand it a little. Have you seen anything around that? You know, I think, I, I think, and, and we've, as a firm, we've done a lot of thought leadership around generational differences in the workplace. And, and we, you know, basically our Cliff's Notes version is a lot of that is kind of overblown and kind of over parsed. Ah, okay. Um, now, Obviously, uh, yes, I have seen some 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 data reflecting that Gen Z, for example, they're going to prefer you know a digital centric mm -hmm. offering. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, I think the, the again the bigger question, the, the bigger um, kind of factor in all of this, uh, are you offering enough engaging learning opportunities for your teams? Are you meeting them where they are? Um, yeah. And that can be that could be a mix of modalities based on based on your organization and their needs. Okay, so the whole idea that it has to be digital for Gen Zs, that's I, really not. So I would say you're probably overthinking it at that point. <laughs> and again, yeah. zoom out, bigger picture, how are we helping our employees level up um, and, and helping them be better today than they were yesterday. Yeah, making them better, that's the big point. So it doesn't have to be these small nuggets, right? Doesn't have to be that. So, but learning is learning is learning. Mm -hmm. So whether you learn better, you know, uh, visually or mm -hmm. whether you learn better, you know, audio wise, yeah. look at that as well. Yeah. This is great, this yeah. is a great. So career development, mm -hmm. organizations sometimes take on the career development piece and also, oftentimes that is in HR. So who is responsible or who owns career development? So on one, on one hand, I think that's an easy question to answer because I think we are all individual, individually responsible for our own development. We are, we are our own stewards and shepherds of our own careers. But organizations have an important role to play in this kind of new age that we're in. I believe it's an organization's responsibility to put learning and development at eye level mm -hmm. for their employees to help keep them, help make them sharper, mm -hmm. stronger mm -hmm. than they were yesterday. I did a, a, a informal poll on LinkedIn and my question was, have you employees ever paid for your own the professional development. 
and a pretty astounding 93% ah. mm -hmm. of respondents said, yes, I have paid for my own professional development out of my own pocket. Mm -hmm. it says to me that employees uh, understand that the world of work is changing. Yes. And that if I'm going to stay relevant, if I'm going to uh, kind of level up and be the top of my game and, and, and advance into new and exciting roles, uh, if I'm going to make more money, if I'm going to get promotions, if I'm going to get, you know, new, better jobs, I need to be better. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a symbiotic relationship. Mm -hmm. So yes, we all are our own uh, career champions, mm -hmm. but organizations uh, have a responsibility, I think, to put those learning opportunities at eye level for their employees. Okay. So the responsibility of the organization then is eye, eye level. Uh, offerings, but to make it better, to make it more rounded and more grounded, you should invest in yourself as well. I, I think we should all invest in ourselves yeah. at yeah. every opportunity to the to the extent we are able. Now, you know, there's somebody out there who maybe has an associate's degree and wants to get a bachelor's degree and can't afford that all on their own. Mm -hmm. So if they work for an employer that offers that as a benefit, education as a benefit, and we're seeing much more of that mm -hmm. in new and exciting models, um, then that's an opportunity for that employee to, um, you know, to reach new, new heights professionally. Mm -hmm. uh, with that help from the employer. Yeah, so employees have to take advantage of the benefits that are in front of them. Sometimes the education reimbursement, those type of programs may be there, but if it's not advertised, you got to find it, find the benefit and utilize it. That's what the company is doing. Yeah, and that's that's the two-way street again. Yeah. Um, employees, I, I've seen companies with really robust, you know, learning uh, opportunities, but they're, they don't promote them as well as they should. Mm -hmm. So the employee is like, gosh, I could really, you know, use a training course on, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it turns out the mm -hmm. employer offers it maybe for free and uh -huh. there's just kind of a mismatch. Uh -huh. So at the, on the flip side of that, at the end of the day, again, because we are our own career champions, mm -hmm. if my employer offers all this great stuff, mm -hmm. this awesome learning, yeah. low cost, yeah. And I don't raise my hand, and I don't jump in, and I don't sign up for yeah, courses. Yeah. Then that's kind of on me. So ah. it goes both ways. Yeah. <laughs> Be assertive, right? Be <laughs> assertive and utilize the resources that you have Absolutely. with your companies. Plus, be your own advocate for career Absolutely. development. You for, are yeah. your own career yeah. champion. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about this. It's often a disconnect between the development that you desire mm -hmm. and the development that you need, okay. <laughs> right? Okay. You know, sometimes it is. Um, I may want leadership development, right. but I really need, I need uh, data analytics training for my compensation job that I'm doing. Okay. So okay. that's that disconnect. So how can individuals discern between those two aspects? Well, uh, that's a big question. I mean, you're, you're talking about it. So I don't, I don't use the term hard and soft skills anymore. Kathy Tupperville kind of disabused me of that language. We know that lady. So you're talking about uh, interpersonal skills and technical yes. skills. Yes. So obviously it's been very interesting as we, as we kind of plunge uh, head, uh, headlong into uh, kind of this new technology age we're in with mm -hmm. AI, we're, we're mm -hmm. a lot of talk about technical skills. Um, but what I what I think is very very interesting is 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 interpersonal skills are really being talked about in organizations. Mm -hmm. Things like communication, collaboration, emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. We're having big conversations. Mm -hmm. People are wanting people who have good EQ. Yes. Right. And the technical skills have to be there. Uh, they're important. But how we build scaffolding around those and, and help those people with interpersonal skills around those. But back to your original question, I think looking at the job you have now and also looking at the job you want. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're in data analytics, but you do want to eventually lead a team yeah. of data analytics people. Yeah. So your professional development there may be, you know, making sure making sure your technical skills mm -hmm. are as sharp, top drawer as as you can get, and maybe that's a maybe that's a refresher, maybe that's 
you know, kind of something new in the field mm -hmm. that you want to stay current on. And maybe it's also, again, some of that interpersonal scaffolding around that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, maybe it's, maybe it's leadership development, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's, um, you know, some of, some of those types of courses. Mm -hmm. um, and that can be, um, I think, a conversation with your manager. Mm -hmm. And, hey, here's, here's what I'm doing, here's what I want to do. What do you think about this? How can I get here? That's a big piece of professional development, career development, whatever terminology we're using. Helping folks kind of get to the next level, get mm -hmm. to the, get them into jobs they want to be, not in addition to being the best at the jobs they're in now. Right. So there has to be an assessment <laughs> of of skills, where you are, where you want to be, right? So be. yeah, it could be an assessment of that. And so what it's vital is that you recognize mm -hmm. that there may be some differences and you use those collaborative resources in order to, to better define what's best. The collaboration with, you, with your manager. Hey, what are some of the things I need? What do mm -hmm. you see that I could, you know, that Absolutely. I could improve in? And then you think about where you wanna go and then that, those mm -hmm. roads can right. Intersect, right. intersect and then you have a great professional development plan for yourself and for your employees. Absolutely. 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 All right. So let's talk about this. In the realm of workforce development, we frequently talk about skills for the future. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. So are we observing any obsolete skills? Is there such thing as obsolete skills these days? Well, again, back into that discussion of technical and interpersonal. Um, Yes, I think a lot of technical skills uh, are changing, especially with AI. Um, you know, I talk to folks about, you know, you're going to have to get your arms around AI, what AI means for your organization. Mm -hmm. I talked with one company uh, after that uh, presentation at the, at the state conference. He came up to me and said, look, you know, your, 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 your slides about AI, you know, that really hit home with us. We've got an employee in our organization who's kind of taken it upon himself to kind of be the AI leader. Okay. And he's kind of threading AI competency throughout our organization. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously those types of skills are those, those type, that subset of technical skill uh, is going to be uh, in demand mm -hmm. moving forward. Um, but again, I think the very interesting thing is Alongside that, I'm seeing such a focus on those interpersonal skills. Yes, um, that are that are more important than ever. Those will, those are transferable from industry to yes. industry. Those I, I don't think will ever be obsolete. Yes, and you know what? That social interaction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's so important. Absolutely. You know, people people used to say, you know, you'll get farther by using your social skills mm -hmm. sure. than your intellect and technology. Sure. sure. So you've got to be able to get along with people. Absolutely. <laughs> you've got to use your social intelligence, right, right as right. well. Right, I mean, yeah, think about social, it this way. Yeah. I mean, you're, 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 you're the AI leader in your organization. You're highly technical, you're super smart. You're just like crazy smart. But, you know, you've got to be able to collaborate with teammates. You've got to be able to, to lead a team. You lead people, develop others, develop those on your team. You've got to be able to communicate kind of the strategic benefits of, of this technology to uh, senior management, yeah. to colleagues, to peers, to your direct reports. So all of those uh, interpersonal skills are super important. There. Yeah, it's so, it's so important. Absolutely. It's so important. It's interesting that you talk about AI and how it is, um, how it is becoming a part of our everyday lives in our organizations. Have you found that organizations are identifying how they're going to use AI, and as part of career development, training their employees on what they've decided they're going to use in order for everyone to be, I, I guess, for everyone to be aware and everyone to be able to utilize the HR tools that you're using? Uh, I think company, if they're not doing that, I think they need to. Okay. I think they definitely need to, um, because I think uh, it's, it's, it's obviously here to stay. Um, I think um, people are 
uh, excited about it, some are scared about it. Am I going to lose my job to it? I think the people who have figured it figured it out so far, I think mm -hmm. there's a lot yet to be figured mm -hmm. out, um, have 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 come to the realization that, hey, if I can use it to make myself more efficient, make my company more efficient, um, then, you know, I'm, I'm going to kind of lean into it. Mm -hmm. um, we see a lot of people kind of dabble with it, mm -hmm. kind of experiment with it, do some fun things with it, and then kind of put it away and, and not come back. I mm -hmm. think, but it behooves company leaders to kind of really figure out kind of how are we going to use it? How can it help us? Mm -hmm. um, and again, going back to the, that example from the state conference, we've got, uh, you know, there, there was the company with the person who kind of volunteered and said, look, I'm going to kind of figure this out mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. And and here's what I think. And mm -hmm. here's how I think we can use it. I think companies need to take uh, a reasoned, balanced approach to mm -hmm. it. Uh, but yeah, it needs to be part of the, the career development discussion. Uh, there are all kinds of resources out there mm -hmm. uh, to kind of level up on AI and, 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 and not with the intention of not being necessarily a subject matter expert, but just being able to use the tools well enough to, to gain some benefit from them. Right. So the enhancement piece. Sure. So it's not to really get rid of jobs. Let's it, it take, may, let's, well, it, and it, it could, it, it may, could, it may, but it may. that's, that, that shouldn't be the leader's main point, Right. but right. it's to enhance what an employee already has, right? In 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 a lot of cases. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Example, compensation specialists, compensation professionals. Mm -hmm. You know, they're having to write job descriptions. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people and managers give them. You know, the basic elements, essential functions of the job description. They write it. Mm -hmm. You put it in AI. It verbalizes it better and enhances. <laughs> the job description. Absolutely. That's an example. As long as you edit it and make sure that it's that it's correct, you know, you're you're good, you're good to go. You know, you're, you're good to go. Yeah, it's so, not perfect. AI is not perfect. But yeah, there there are, there are a lot of opportunities for for efficiencies in HR. That's that's probably another show, and probably need to get somebody who's really an expert on it, which is not me. Okay, but if this is what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask you what you know. <laughs> okay. Give me give me one or two examples of that of HI, AI for HR. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, job descriptions, interview guides, I think uh, summarizing, um, you know, large documents, getting themes from large documents. I mean, I think there's, I think there's a lot of different use cases. <laughs> you got it here. Yeah. Job descriptions, interview guides. Those are the things that you can start thinking about yeah. in your organizations that's gonna enhance performance and enhance the career development of your employees. Training guides, if we're talking about training and development, yeah. you know, distilling, um, you know, a, a training guide, uh, you know, scripts for training, you know, they're, again, I'm no expert, and, <laughs> and but there's, there's, you know, somebody can say, you know, God, here are 10 things you need to do, you know. Yeah. Another show. <laughs> But you got you got some nuggets here, right? <laughs> and it probably is another show. But you got some nuggets here. Okay. So best practices in the field. Best practices. What are some of the best practices around career development that's relevant today? So I think for organizations, um, well, I'll start with the individual. For mm -hmm. individuals, and, and again, I, I think individuals understand that the world of work is changing. I mean, there's rapid change. Mm -hmm. There are going to be skill shortages just because of demographics and with boomers retiring. Um, the, the employer, at, at, at its core, the employer-employee contract has changed. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. And it's it been has. changing for a long time. Yeah. It used to be you went to work for a, a, a company, you stayed there a long time, mm -hmm. and you retired. Yes. Um, we saw that erode and shift over time, mm -hmm. but when you get to the pandemic, it was like kind of a match on a powder keg. <laughs> now you're seeing yes. you're seeing uh, loyalty both ways, mm -hmm. uh, kind of erode. You're seeing uh, portfolio careers, uh, nonlinear careers, uh, gig work. You're seeing fractional work. You're seeing the workplace is different. The the new employer employee contract is more. Hey, I'm going to come to work for you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you my best, mm -hmm. but in return, you're going to help make me stronger, better, sharper, 
uh, than I was today, yes. than I was yes. yesterday. Mm -hmm. So employees understand the need for leveling up. So for organizations, I would say, you know, commit, commit to a learning culture. And that sounds kind of dumb and simple, but I think, I think making a commitment to, and making a, a realization, coming to the realization that, hey, I've got to help my team yes. get better. So commit, uh, model it from mm -hmm. the top, mm -hmm. okay? Have your CEO come out and say, gosh, this is what professional development did for me. Right. You know, this is what it did for my career. You know, uh -huh. model it from mm -hmm. the top. Mm -hmm. Make it accessible. That That's where I get back to eye mm -hmm. level. Don't hide it. Um, you know, modernize it. Get, get rid of, you know, we talk about kind of check the box training. Yes. And nobody wants that. Right. Nobody benefits from that. Yeah. So make your learning, you know, very impactful. You can measure it. Um, meet your employees where they are, again, with different modalities. Survey your employees. Yes. Kind of get their opinion Please. as to what yeah. would work uh, best for them. I mean, you may be in a manufacturing environment with a production uh, kind of scenario. It's going to be hard to pull people yeah. off a production line for yes. a day or two. Yes. Um, so you've got to kind of meet your employees where they are. But, but you know, even if you're starting from zero, start today. Small is better than nothing. Start small, yeah. but start today committing to a learning culture. Thread learning and development throughout your organization. Make it a part of job descriptions. Make it a part of onboarding. Make it a part of performance reviews. Make it a part of 360s. Make it thread learning and development throughout the organization. Absolutely, that is great. I love that. Commit soon and com commit commit now. And you'll be amazed of how even that message in recruitment Absolutely. will draw um, interested candidates to your organization. Absolutely. They know that you're committed to career development, so they want to get on board with it too, right? Absolutely. And I love the idea of modeling that when CEOs and executive management tell their stories Absolutely. around what happened. People are more inspired about how you how you navigated through things, right? As opposed to reading it in a book about someone else. The connection of the human touch. Absolutely. Absolutely it is. Wow, this has been such a wonderful, wonderful episode, Mike. I love that you're here and thank you so much for coming today. Absolutely, my pleasure. <laughs> All right. Wow, we've gained such insight today on how cultivating a culture of career development plays a pivotal role in retaining top talent. Remember, develop your employees to leave and watch them stay. As HR professionals, we must stay aware and abreast of the trends in the landscape of talent management and retention. HR professionals can be the resource to help educate, guide, and be the trusted advisor to obtain workplace success. Be sure to watch a new episode of Let's Talk HR with Dr. Deneen, the first of every month on the YouTube channel of the same name and on Comcast Xfinity, channel 17 and channel 1091, Monday nights from eight o'clock to 8.30 p.m. Please note, you can watch Let's Talk HR with Dr. Deneen and prior episodes at any time. Go to the YouTube channel and type in the talk show title. Be sure to subscribe, no fee, and click on the notification bell. This is HR TV. I'm Dr. Deneen, and I wanna talk HR with you. HR forever, see you next time.